Our scripture reading this morning comes from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he has lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. This is the word of God for the people of God. So before we begin with our sermon today, just a few uh, quick announcements. First, we would like to have the sanctuary uh, undecorated. Unfortunately, it's that time of year where we undecorate the sanctuary. We'd like to have that uh, done by the 10th. So if there's any decorations that you have that you want to take down, please feel free to come on in and take them down. Also, there will be no staff meeting um, on the 5th. We're not going to hold that staff meeting. If there's something that you need to report, just give me a call or send me an email. Let me know, and I'll disseminate it as needed. There will be a SPRC meeting on the 19th at 7 uh, here at Mount Pleasant. Are there any other announcements? Okay. So first and foremost, today I would like to wish you all a Happy New Year. So Happy New Year. Thank you. You know, the thing that I look forward to the most on New Year's is the idea of starting out with a new clean slate for the year that's to come. We get a chance to forget about all the troubles that we've had in the past year. And boy, is that a big thing this year. And begin to look forward towards the things that we can accomplish in the new year. Now today in our sermon, We're going to get a little bit philosophical. And don't worry, I promise that the dissertation is going to be short. In the 17th century, there was a prominent English scholar by the name of John Locke. Among his many ideas that he put forth was the idea of tabula rasa. And tabula rasa is Latin for clean slate. And his idea was the idea that a person, when they're born, their mind is, cl- is a clean slate. It can be formed and changed into any, by all the different encounters that they have throughout their lives. And I think that is where we find ourselves at the beginning of the year. We're hoping for a clean slate. That way we can start again in a new way. To put this idea in a different way, one of my favorite movies is Forrest Gump. And I don't know how many times I've seen it I know that when I was a young man, uh, when it came out, and I mean young, young man, I was like 11 when it came out, I went to the movie theaters and I think I saw it three times, which was a pretty big accomplishment to do because the closest movie theater was over 20 miles away from my house and I couldn't drive at the time, so I had to get someone to drive me those couple times. So I really loved the movie. And in the movie there's a scene where Forrest and Lieutenant Dan are in a bar on New, in New York on New Year's Eve. And they're being accompanied by 
well, let's just call them professional ladies. And one of the women tells Forrest that she, how much she loves New Year's because it's a chance to start over. And everybody gets a second chance. A very welcoming thought, isn't it? The idea that we can all begin again at the turn of the new year. That we can move forward past the mistakes that we have made in the past. At times in our family, we have days that can be described as rough. I know that you are all very surprised by that. <laughs> After all, isn't the pastor's family supposed to be the model for all other families? Well, we do have our rough days, just like everyone else does. And there are times when I know that I can be accused of losing my temper. However, we have this family idea that's all about starting over. When things get too heated, or say a certain child has a day where they are constantly getting into trouble, we call a timeout and we start over. It's a good way of resetting the course of the day from continuing down a negative path. And it's our way of wiping that slate clean and beginning anew. Now, all this is well and good. It's a great idea for us to start the new year with a renewed hope for a better year. And I think we can all benefit from that mindset. However, I have some bad news and some good news. The bad news is this. Just because the year has changed, it doesn't mean that our slates have been wiped clean. It doesn't mean that our past mistakes go away. We would still carry the burden of them. But the good news is, we don't have to. You see, we have Jesus as the ultimate slate cleaner. We don't need to wait until the new year comes to begin again. We can begin again any time that we choose. We do so through our confession and repentance for the mistakes that we have made. And once we have done, the, done that, the good news is that that slate is completely clean for us. And that is such a wonderful thing. How many of you have ever written on a little chalkboard? I'm going to guess most of you here today have. You know, when you try to erase the mistakes that you make, you can erase them. However, when you erase a chalkboard, there's still chalk left on the board. You see, the redemption that we find in Jesus is not like that. If it was, how dirty would our chalkboards be? If it is simply erased and not completely removed every time we made a mistake. So let's put some numbers to this idea. Say that you're an absolute saint of a person. Would you agree that only sinning three times a day would be pretty good? And you might be thinking, well, three? I never sin that much in a day. Well, I encourage you to be a bit more introspective, is that, if that's what you thought. But, let's say three sins a day. Now, you multiply that by 365 days, and you have a sin total of 1,095 for the year. Now, if you were to write on your chalkboard... 1,095 times and erase it each time without fully cleaning it, you know you would no longer be able to see what you are writing. You would just have a white smeary mess. But we are not bound that way. We are fully forgiven and our slates are wiped completely clean. Now I want you to remember this. If you have repented, if you have turned back away from your sin, if you have given them to Jesus, do not, and I repeat, do not take them back. And what I mean by that is this. Stop beating yourself for the mistakes you have made in the past. If you are constantly berating yourself after accepting God's forgiveness, then you need to know that you haven't fully accepted his forgiveness. And his forgiveness is absolute. I know that this time of year is one where we like to make resolutions for ourselves. Sometimes they're nice things like, I need to get more exercise, or boy, I should really walk the dogs more. Sometimes they're much more difficult things, like I just want to stop drinking. I need to get away from doing these drugs. I just want to stop the self-destruction that's part of my life. 
boy, I'd really love to repair that relationship in my life that I destroyed. Either through my own choices or through choices of someone else. And maybe there is something that you've been holding on to for years that's stopping you from living your life the way God intended. And this is the year that you're trying to give that up. Well, here is the best news. You do not have to do it all alone. You don't have to because it doesn't matter what you've done. Jesus Christ still wants to be your Savior. He still wants to be there for you and wipe that slate completely clean for you. And he wants to be there to help you find new ways to begin your life again. And we as a church family want to be there for you too. Now, we can't give you absolution from your sins. That is not our place as a church family. But we can be there to support you and to let you know, no matter what is going on in your life, that we care. Now, if you haven't given yourself to Jesus yet, I invite you to do so today. And I'd love to talk to you more about it. My challenges for you this week are, if you haven't asked Jesus to wipe your slate clean, do it today. Don't wait another day. And if you have asked him to wipe your slate clean, let him do his work. And don't dirty it up again with your regrets. Amen.